Okay, it's time to <clears throat> start the review for the final. So here we go with the, the first one. Um, all right, let me do the usual title, MO8, Spring 21. Um, okay, so that's final exam review. Final exam review, and this is A. Okay, problem number one. This is going to be done a little bit differently this review with you than 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 the other reviews. Give me a chance to explain. Problem number one won't be any different. Just give me a chance to explain eventually. Okay, so here's the here's the situation for problem number one. Let's 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 assume it's faculty members, right? So the total amount of faculty is um, faculty is 150. Here comes a table. And let's say, you know, they're divided up in departments, majors, whatever. I'll just call it major. And uh, that's on the left-hand side. And now the other side is the number of faculty there in each for each major in the department. Okay, those are the two sides of the table. So the major is A, forget about, you know, uh, actually calling them things, can't be bothered with that. So the major is A, there's 27 faculty members, B, 33, C, 45, D, 8, what do we have here, 18, um, E, is 15 and finally f the last one is 12 count all these up and you should count all these up and you should get 150 so either they could tell you about the 150 or would let make us figure it out by counting up all the faculty and seeing that there's 150. okay here's the here's what they want us to do they want us to find Central angle, I think, is what they'll usually call it, or the angle, central angle, angle, um, as follows. X to the zero, hold on, just one second, plus they give us a chart here. Okay, a chart, chart of, the, of the majors. So I'm not going to do it very well, you know, divide it into nice proportions or anything like that. So they say, go find this angle right here. This is X to the, this is the angle. And this is proportion to the fat for A, the major is A. The proportion of the faculty. Um, going counterclockwise, uh, we, yeah, I guess counterclockwise. Doesn't matter. It just doesn't really matter. But anyway, is B. Then another portion goes to um, actually uh, C. Yeah, this is not in proportion at all. I'm just dividing it up somewhat randomly. D and then E and then F. So all of them are accounted for. A, B, C, D, F. But it's not really in good proportion. Anyway, they want to know this angle. So here's what you do. Here's the answer. <clears throat> the 27. Look up A. Right, look up A, 27, is out of how many? Count all these up, or in our case, we actually, they, they gave us the number, very nice. So that's 27 over 150. Okay, is what angle? We don't know what the angle is, X, and how much is their total angle in a circle? 360. So they're relying on us knowing that piece of information if they ask a question like this, that there's 360 degrees in an angle. Going for a full, full circle is a full 360. Okay, but that is the proportion. Now work out this proportion. You do cross multiplication, 27 times 360 and 150 times X. What does this become eventually? I actually did it. And it turns into that X will be equal to 64.8. And that is the final answer. But don't forget, let me pick this up just in case it's not being seen by you on the, on the video. I hope it is, but if it's not. And let me also mention that don't forget, you have to, to cross-multiply, right? So you have to go like this, up left, 
bottom right, bottom left, up right. So it would become 150x equals 20 sim 27 times 360, whatever that is. You do the multiplication with the calculator you're available and then divide it by 150 and you should get 64.8 and problem number one is over. Okay, a clean new sheet for problem number two. Here we go. Problem number two, clean new sheet. Okay, now here's what's different about this, <clears throat> about this um, <clears throat> review for the final. But for problem number two, I'm not actually doing it with you. And, but problem number two, go see, go to exam three. It's about a median. I can tell you what's, what it's about. It's about median. And you can find a problem that's just like it. That like, well, what we need to do in ex, go to exam three. And I will probably do this with you in class. Practice at least doing one of these, going to it. But you would know how to do it anyway. But doesn't matter. Here, here it is. Go to exam three, review D, right? So we've done, you've got all this stuff is on YouTube, all these reviews. Exam three, review D, problem number eight. So I, I tell you exactly where to go to find a problem involving medium that you need to practice to start getting ready for the final. All right. Now I'm do so some of the problem, what's the bottom line? In this in this review for the final, some of them I'm doing together with you on the screen that, that I'm doing together with you in the exam final review. And some of them I'm pointing to you to where to go look and try it there. Now the next one, number three, happens to be about frequency distribution. Uh, it leads to they want to they, they want to know about the midpoint of click leads to having to do with midpoint of classes. All the stuff we've done before, just bear with me, I'll tell you where we did it. Midpoint of, cla of, of, a, cla of a class or classes, which eventually leads to that they want the mean. Okay, but the main thing, I don't really, this title, this is not so important because all you gotta do is you'll see the example that you need to know about by going to go to Exam three, exam three, review D again. Don't worry, there's gonna be more than exam three review Ds to go see. And which problem? Problem number nine. Next, problem number four that I'd like to do with you. Problem number four, I wanna do with you on the paper. Let me move this up very early on in the game. Might as well. Uh, to make sure that everything is visible. So what's problem number four? Here it is. It's a pretty short problem. We've done this before on previous reviews, but it was so short that it was worth doing. Uh, might as well just take care of it. Percent. <clears throat> the percent of the um, of um, students. It wants the percent of students. No, we didn't necessarily do this before. I'm sorry. I take that back. Anyway, we want the percent of students that are shorter, but some of them we've done and I do it anyway. Some of them are on our previous reviews and I still do it together with you on this, on this, uh, on this, um, on this final exam review because it's just hardly worth it. We could, it goes pretty short, some of them. All right, anyway, shorter than, than 67, 67 inches. Okay, so here's the data. Here comes the data. Here comes the, here comes the data. So this is the question already. What's the percent of students shorter than 67 inches? There's the question. And here comes the data. Uh, it is 59. Right, they might put the data in front. I'm putting the data in the back for whatever reason. 62. 63, 65, and I've got it already in order, in ascending order, but if it's, if it's not, you go to your calculator, send it to your calculator, and the calculator will put it in ascending order for you, and if the, and if it won't, then you'll just do it yourselves. You put it in, if it comes at you scrambled, get it in ascending order. So I'm, I've got it in ascending order over here, 68, 69, 69, 70. Okay, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Very convenient. Now, 
what is the percent, so you need, it, you need it in order, in ascending order, what is the percent of students shorter than 67 inches? Well, where's 67? 67 is right over here, right? It's the, it does not represent it. But well, you can see how many people are shorter than that. One, two, three, four, five, six people are shorter. Out of how many? Six out of 10. Well, how much is six out of 10? It's 0. 0.6 in decimal, right? You could do that on the calculator. And 0. 0.6, you move it over two places to the right, which becomes 60%. 60% of the students are shorter than 67 inches. Where's 67 inches? right over here in the data. It doesn't actually show up, but that's where it would have been. And that's all there is to it. So it's a pretty short problem. It was definitely worthwhile <clears throat> doing um, uh, right on the, instead of referring you somewhere, which, uh, which I don't know if there would be anyway, but it was just as easy just to do it. Okay, new piece of paper, problem number five. Problem number five is not necessarily long. It just takes me a while to draw. So I hope I have time on the video. Here goes. Problem number five. Okay, it's, it has to do with <clears throat> the normal distribution. So they have a nice picture. I have a terrible picture. When they, if they give you a problem like this, they have a nice picture. Maybe mine is a little bit better than usual, maybe, but they're usually so terrible. So here comes point one. Here comes point two. Um, point three, point three, point four, point five, and point six. Okay, now it goes down the middle, right? This is always the mean, the one that goes down the middle. To the left of it is negative one because this is negative one then it's hash mark negative two hash mark negative three now guess what that hash mark is 0.5 that's negative one negative 1.5 negative two negative 2.5 that's to the left of the mean on the right hand side is hash mark then one hash mark then two hash mark then three so this is 0.5 then 1 1.5 2 2.5 3 right because it's in the middle between 0 and 1 obviously if it's between 0 and 1 that's 0.5 between 0 and negative 1 it's negative 0.5 okay so here is the question um <clears throat> here's the here's what they want us to do shade the region shade the region under standard normal a curve, fancy words, it's going to turn out anticlimatically pretty straightforward, to the left, to the left of z of, sorry, z equals negative 0.5, negative 0.5. These are the z's, okay? These are their values and these are there and he's here's the z's all right what do you do and what do you do how do you treat what is it, how do you do this with that how do you deal with this in alex here's what you do in alex there's an icon that looks like this it looks like this you'll see it you've seen it already possibly on homework it looks pr approximately like that click that icon okay click that icon then after that Go to negative, go to negative 0.5, go to negative 0.5, which is over here, go to get negative 0.5 and click, go over here and click, after you click that icon, and the, a line will come down, a line will come down, and then after that line comes down, that's the first thing you do, the second thing you do is you click the shade button, which looks like this. Click that. That shades for you, and it will work to get you to um, to shade. It'll start shading all of this in, all the stuff left of the left of point five, of uh, negative point five, and you're done because that's right over here is negative point five. Okay, that was part A. I'll have to show you part B on the next video. I don't want to lose this video. I don't want to be more than fifteen, obviously. Here we go.